As a designer, you've probably heard the term fire rated before, but what does that actually mean? Spoiler alert, it does not mean that something is fireproof. In this video, I'm gonna break down the fire rating system, talk about what makes a partition fire rated, and give you an example of what a question like this could look like on the NCIDQ exam. What's up designers, my name is Kelsey, I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission here on YouTube is to help other designers excel in their career while promoting transparency about the industry and profession. A quick plug before we get into today's video, if you're currently studying for the NCIDQ exam, then be sure to get your hands on my NCIDQ study resources. You can find the link to all of that, including timestamps, links to mentioned videos, and additional study resources down in the description box. So without further ado, let's talk fire rated partitions. According to the IBC, the fire rating system is a classification method used to measure how long building materials, such as walls, doors, and ceilings, can withstand fire before failing. Knowing a partition's fire rating is important because it ensures that buildings meet safety codes and provide occupants enough time to evacuate the space safely in case of a fire. When you simply say something is fire rated or simply rated, this means that the partition, door, or window is constructed to be fire resistant. Fire resistant means that it slows the spread of fire and does not combust or immediately burst into flames. Note that a partition cannot be fireproof, which means that it is indestructible to fire because it is nearly impossible to make something fireproof. Another thing to note is that the fire rating system only applies to construction assemblies. So a partition assembly, a door assembly, or a window assembly. When we say assembly, we mean not just the window itself, but the window, the trim, the casing, just like a door. The door panel, the door trim, the door casing, that is considered an assembly. It is a bunch of those smaller construction parts that are put together to create one assembly. <laughs> you can use a piece of fire rated gypsum wallboard, but that doesn't automatically make that partition fire rated. The entire partition must be constructed in a way that meets fire rating requirements. To know how well a partition or door is able to withstand fire, it will be labeled as either a one hour or a two hour rated. It is possible to have a higher rating than two hours, but you most likely won't encounter that on the exam, so you don't need to worry about it. A partition is considered one hour rated because that type of construction assembly has been tested to withstand fire for one hour. Meaning if you were trapped in a room with walls that were one hour fire rated, albeit that would be a terrifying experience, it would take approximately one hour for the flames to break through that wall or for the wall to fail. So you have roughly a one hour window to escape or wait for a very handsome fireman to come save you. Two hour rated partitions and doors will hold off fire for two hours, three hour rated for three hours, and so on, you understand the pattern. Glass also has its own fire rating requirements. It can either be fire protection rated or fire resistance rated. Glass that is fire protection rated is constructed to withstand and slow the spread of fire. It does not, however, block radiant heat, meaning it still heats up. Because of this reason, there is a limit on the size a fire protected glass wall can be. For a one hour rated partition, three quarters hour or 45 minutes rated glass is allowed to be used as long as it does not exceed 25% of the length of the corridor. Glass that is fire resistance rated is constructed to both withstand fire and block radiant heat. Because it blocks heat, there is no limitation on the percentage of this type of glazing that can be used in a fire rated partition. Let's look at a floor plan and discuss which walls must be fire rated. If you've already watched my means of egress video on the egress system, you know that exits like fire stairs are protected spaces to allow for safe means of egress, which means those walls most definitely need to be fire rated. Not only that, vertical shafts provide the most direct path for fire and smoke to spread from floor to floor, so interior exit stairways must be completely enclosed and have a minimum of a one hour fire rating. In buildings four or more stories high, interior exit stairways must have a two hour fire rating. Note that stories or numbers of floors in a building include basements but exclude mezzanines. Other walls that must have a one hour fire rating are tenant dividing walls, walls that separate a tenant from a public corridor, storage rooms exceeding 100 square feet, 
and certain assembly occupancies of 750 square feet or greater with an occupant load of 50 people or more. Some other variables that may determine fire rating are the building occupancy and whether or not the building has an automatic sprinkler system. Here's an example of a type of question that you might see on the NCIDQ exam regarding fire rated partitions. We're given a floor plan with empty partition tags and need to place the correct tags at the correct wall locations. With this plan, we're given our partition schedule that gives us the rating of each wall type. This schedule may also contain additional information like partition heights, acoustic properties, and if the wall goes all the way up to the deck or if it just goes to the finished ceiling. For the purposes of this example, we can pretty much ignore all of that information, except I want to quickly note that a fire rated partition always goes to the deck because if a partition only stops at the finished ceiling, there is that plenum space above between the ceiling and the plenum that fire and smoke can travel to and that wouldn't be a fire rated partition. So as a note, all fire rated partitions must go all the way to the deck. Let's look at these partition locations one by one and identify if they need to be one hour rated or not. All right, so here's our floor plan and partition schedule that the NCIDQ exam is giving us. Again, this is an example and you will probably see a lot more partition types like P3, P4, and you might also see this partition schedule only halfway filled out, but for the purposes of this video, I'm giving you guys P1 and P2 as two different partition types and they're already filled in with the information. So if we look at our plan, we have a bunch of these partition tags, which are the diamonds with the lime. Those diamonds are partition tags. So they are tagging that wall to be able to tell a contractor how to build that wall or the properties of that wall. As we can see from the partition schedule, P1 looks like it's a non-rated wall. So it is not fire rated. It does not have a rating check mark and it does say that it goes up to the finished ceiling. We know that fire rated partitions go deck to deck. So this confirms that. And then P2 is gonna be our one hour rated partition. It's checked one hour and it goes deck to deck. So let's place the P2s in the correct spots first, and then that can help us inform what's going to be P1. So we know that fire stairwells always have to be fire rated. So in this stair A, we can put P2. Now I'm just doing this on my iPad right now to show you. On the actual exam, it will probably be a drag and drop situation. So you'll actually have a, an icon here and you'll have to drag it into this diamond shape. But for now, I'm just gonna write it down to show you guys. So that's definitely gonna be P2, a fire rated partition. We also know that any tenant demising walls, so the wall between these two tenants, because this is one tenant and this is another tenant, this one is gonna be P2. So I will write P2 and any walls dividing a tenant space and a public corridor space. This here is the public corridor. Looks like there's a tag here which we'll put as P2. And then there's one other partition tag that is going to be P2. And that is going to be this one here because this storage unit is greater than 100 square feet. We have another storage unit right here, but this one's only 15 square feet. So that one's actually gonna be P1. That does not need to be a fire rated wall. And then everything else, we have one over here that is devising a meeting room and an office that doesn't necessarily need to be fire rated. And then this one devising a meeting room and an open office that doesn't need to be fire rated. Let me know down in the comments how many of these you guys got right. If you're looking for more NCIDQ test prep videos, then check out my NCIDQ video playlist here. And if you're thinking about taking the NCIDQ exam or you're currently on the road to studying, then don't forget to click the link down in the description box to be added to my email list and get access to a bunch of different study resources. I will see you next time for more educational interior design content. Thanks for watching and happy studying.